Hey everyone, welcome to another English grammar lesson. Today we're going to be covering a few more common abbreviations. Okay, so the first abbreviation we're going to talk about today, EG, comes from the Latin phrase exempli gradia, which simply means for example. And because of that, it's pretty easy to use. There are many types of trees, e.g. oak, fig, and sycamore, in the park. So here we have the abbreviation EG, followed by a comma because it's being used like for example, which is a transition that, in most cases, requires a comma after it. And then we just have a list of those examples, which, in this case, is just a couple trees. Or how about this? I enjoy many kinds of music, e.g. rock, jazz, and rap. So again, we use EG just like for example, which means we're throwing in that comma after it. And then, of course, we list our examples. Now, a few quick things to note. Personally, I don't love starting sentences with EG. In fact, I almost always like putting EG in parentheses, like in the first example, or maybe after a dash or something, like this example. But if you do start a sentence with it, like after a period, you know, you would just capitalize the E. And if you end a sentence with it, the period at the end of EG can also serve as the period at the end of your sentence. You don't need to. The same preferences and style suggestions apply to our next abbreviation, IE, which comes from the Latin phrase id est, meaning that is, or in other words. Let's take a look. I need some compensation, IE, a raise, for my hard work. So we're saying that we need some compensation, which is a fancy way of saying that we want to raise. Again, notice the comma. This is because IE is very similar to in other words, which is a phrase that pretty much always takes a comma. Or how about this? I'm a vegetarian, IE, I don't eat meat. Again, you're saying that you're a vegetarian, so in other words, you don't eat meat. Pretty simple, right? Just keep paying attention to your punctuation, making sure everything's in the right place, and you're all good. Okay, now on to our third and final abbreviation, et al., which comes from the Latin phrase et ali, meaning and others. So et al. is basically the same thing as et cetera, which we've covered in a previous lesson, only it's used with people, not things. So if you ever see et al., it's probably going to be in some sort of professional or technical writing. And that's because et al. is often used with a list of authors or contributors, usually for an article or a research publication or something of that nature. So let's take a look. The authors, Smith et al., have a very unique writing style. So this is pretty simple. Et al. means and others. So basically what you're saying here is the authors, Smith and others, have a very unique writing style. And here you'll notice that there's no comma because you've only got one name before it in the list. Or how about this one? The article from Houston, Thomas, Sanchez et al. was quite interesting. Again, you're using this abbreviation just like and others. So in this one, we do have a comma because there are multiple names listed before the et al. One important thing to note though about et al. is that it's plural. So whenever you use it, you have to be replacing at least two people's names. So if you only have one person left in your list, don't use at all. Only use it when you're leaving off at least two people. Cool. Well, whether you came here for a refresher or just on learning this stuff for the first time, I hope this video helped. Be sure to check out the free practice down in the description, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.